I'm Tassiana Bienemy, and thank you for watching this edition of Sun TV News. It has been four years since the two hospitals in the Turks and Caicos Islands were opened under the management of EnterHealth Canada. During that time, there has been much public debate about the cost of the hospitals and about the quality of medical service offered to the public. The hospital's new CEO, Jill McGree, acknowledges the criticism, but she says many people don't know that the hospitals are saving the TCI millions of dollars by providing health care locally instead of having to send people overseas. McGree spoke to the media after a recent tour of the hospital with Governor Peter Beckenham, Deputy Leader of the People's Democratic Movement, Honorable Sean Oswood, and Director of Medical Services. We hear more in this clip. We have done an incredible job. I know that there is a lot of concern in terms of the history of the hospitals and the expense that goes along with that. But what people do not take into consideration is the millions and millions of dollars that we have saved the country by bringing care locally so that people do not have to travel overseas any longer for for that care and for that service. There are still some services, for example, we do not have open heart surgery or a cardiac cath lab uh, in Turks and Caicos Islands, and we really don't have sufficient population to really develop that here. Uh, but we are al always looking at um, what services we uh, can bring on island. And so we do now have um, a large number of visiting consultants that come in either monthly or quarterly or biannually from all over the world uh, to provide care to um, not only our local population, but also for all of those tourists that end up you know, having difficulty on their cruise ships and, and come in as well. The hospital CEO noted, however, that patients, including babies that are very sick, are still going overseas for very highly complicated medical matters. I think that the most that people are going off island now for are for uh, more tertiary or quat quaternary care. So if they're going off island for organ transplants, very highly complicated um, neurosurgical procedures, you know, brain surgery, um, uh, intensive care unit, critical care uh, beds that are at a higher level than what we have um, the capacity here for. Also, we only do level one and level two neonatal intensive care unit, and so we are still sending overseas level three neonatal uh, intensive care unit uh, patients. For a level three neonatal intensive care unit, you usually have to have a neonatologist on site 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and that's a very, very expensive proposition for a very small number of babies. And so we, um, we have level one and level two. We do have a pediatrician, Dr. Solar, who is a neonatologist, and so that enables us to um, take care of a higher acuity of babies than we normally would be able, able to. A level one would be if a baby uh, gets in distress after delivery, if they're not breathing well, if they need to go under a phototherapy lamp because they're jaundiced. Uh, it's an ill baby, but not very ill. Somebody who you may just have to attach to oxygen, you don't have to intubate that, that baby, uh, but just has a little challenge or illness or difficulty after delivery. They usually recover quite well with one-to-one -one nursing observation with just some oxygen, maybe some IV fluids, and they get better. When you start to go a little bit higher than that, now it's a baby who's very ill, who needs, yes, one-to-one -one nursing, the care of a neonatologist, may require intubation, but you know the disease that they have, you think you can manage at that level and they can recover after a prolonged period of um, observation in a special care baby unit. Then you have, as Jill mentioned, those extremely ill babies, extremely premature, requires not only just the neonatologist, as Jill mentioned, but also because of the risk of complications associated with them, you might need to have a pediatric uh, neonatal surgeon. Um, to manage that, you need to have, you go into what you call the intensive care unit setting, 
where you need to have certain laboratory facilities to round the clock lab work on them. So it's almost like an ICU for a neonate, essentially. Meantime, Governor Beckenham said he was very impressed with the facilities at the Shishaya Hall Hospital. Uh, I thought it was very interesting. I was very impressed, as I hope I should be, by such a new facility. But it's a great facility for the people of Turks and Caicos. Uh, I'd been here before several times, but I hadn't actually been around the whole hospital. And uh, they kindly offered me a, a complete visit with the, the new medical director, Dr. Braithwaite and uh, it was great what I saw. Beckenham said the facilities at Cheshire Hall were far better than those he saw when he was based in the Philippines. He stressed that it was important the country receives value for money from the hospital. Well, I compared it at one point to the facilities I used to see in the Philippines where three pregnant ladies would share a bed. Um, it's nothing like that here, that's for sure. So uh, the people here, of course they should be better off than, uh, than, than a country which is not as economically developed as, as TCI. Uh, but the facilities are, look to me, very good indeed. The important thing obviously is to make sure that firstly the people of Turks and Caicos use it properly uh, and that secondly we as a, a government and as a country uh, get value for money. That's not directly my responsibility. There's a Minister of Health, there's an Opposition Minister for Health. It's for them to ensure that they're getting value for money from, from the hospital. But uh, there's undoubtedly a great facility here for the people of the islands. Deputy Leader of the Opposition, Honorable Sean Oswood, who was invited to the hospital tour, told reporters that the cost of health care continues to be a major concern. Well, obviously we're concerned about the cost of health care and we're always applying pressure to the government to try to, to look at ways of decreasing the cost without decreasing the services and the quality of services that are being offered. So with every, one of every dollar that is, one of every three dollars that the country brings in goes to health care, something that obviously as, the, as an oversight arm of the government that we play, we got to make sure that the money is being spent properly and that our people are look, being looked after with the highest level of care. I'm Tassiana Biennemi and thank you for watching this edition of Sun TV News.